were there black prophets from the ones that were mentioned to us? And we will find actually a few names that are household names, names that we read in the Quran. One of them, historically speaking, speaking is Sulaiman alayhi salam. Sulaiman alayhi salam is biblically described as having dark skin. Okay, Bani Israel was not, you know, they, they had uh, various colors, historically speaking. Why? Because their origins were different. Some of them had Arab origins, some of them had some Egyptian origin and so on and so forth. Sulaiman alayhi salam is biblically described as having dark skin, for example. Um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam comes from the lineage of a black woman. Who is that woman? Hajar alayhi salam. Okay, so that's actually the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi himself. Musa alayhi salam, the man who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to directly, Kalimullah, the man who the Qur'an speaks about more than any other human being in history, subhanAllah, Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam did not just say that he was black. We're not, we're not even talking about biblical athar, we're talking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. He said that Musa alayhi salam, when I saw him, he resembled the people of Az-Zut or Shanu'ah. Az-Zut and Shanu'ah were the two darkest tribes amongst the Arabs. So the Prophet sallallahu said, Musa alayhi salam had the blackest skin. He was not, you know, and, and you know, that's, that's part of the problem with Hollywood imagery. Like Musa alayhi salam does not look like Christian Bale. All right. He doesn't look like, the, in even the older movie, The Ten Commandments, right? We have a certain image of Moses that's in our heads. Musa alayhi salam looks nothing like that. Okay, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is saying when I saw him, and some of the ulama, they pointed out that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was saying that to the Sahaba, you know, not only just to, to, to describe them physically, because he did do that sallallahu alayhi wa for some of the Prophets, but also to show them the superiority of Musa alayhi wa despite the color of his skin. That there is no man, subhanAllah, that, that, that is praised more in the Qur'an and spoken about more in the Qur'an than him. So if you have a problem with people who have darker skin, you have a problem with Musa alayhi salam, then you have a serious problem with the Qur'an and you have a serious problem with faith altogether. So subhanAllah, how can a racist be a Muslim then? How can a racist be a believer? How can a racist say he loves the Qur'an? When Kalimullah, the one who Allah spoke to most, is a man who was dark, extremely dark, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said. Now, obviously the most, uh, the, the prophet who you have the most controversy about always in history is Jesus, alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam. Why? Because Isa alayhi salam is the most highly politicized prophet in history. Even though he was not himself necessarily political per se. But his image has been politicized for, throughout history. Actually, subhanAllah, even uh, the earliest uh, days of Christianity after the Apostle Paul, the image that Jesus assumed uh, dependent on the culture that Paul uh, was reaching. So Isa alayhi salam to the Persians looked like Mithras. He looked exactly like their Persian gods. To the Romans, he looked like their Roman gods. To the Egyptians, he looked like the Egyptian gods. To the Indians, some of the, you know, some of the, the Hindus actually, you know, uh, said that Isa alayhi salam was an incarnation of the Lord Vishnu. So they portrayed him as a carnation of the Lord Vishnu. So Isa alayhi salam, his image has been politicized for thousands of years. Obviously the Atlantic slave trade, okay, using the image of a white god. I remember subhanAllah, me personally, I remember, um, you know, my, my, my dad teaches at Southern University, which is a historically black college, and I went to Xavier University for some time. And Xavier, I remember walking in Xavier University and seeing uh, a picture of, because of, Xavier is a Catholic university, seeing a picture of Isa alayhi salam, for example, you know, with, with dreadlocks. And with dark skin, and I was like, "This is interesting," but it's probably more historically accurate than the, the images that we're used to. But right away, I was I was throttled, and I was like, "Wait a minute, that's that's not Isa alayhi salam." But I'm like, "Well, what, what is Isa alayhi salam?" Right? What does Jesus, peace be upon him, look like? Interestingly enough, we find a disagreement amongst the Sahaba themselves. So we find a few ahadith. Uh, one of them is from Ibn Umar radiAllahu taala anhu, and this is authentic hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says. That while I was uh, sleeping at the Kaaba, I saw a dark man. I saw a dark man who is the most handsome of dark men that you have ever seen. Meaning the most handsome man I've ever seen. Uh, or the most handsome of dark men I've ever seen. So he's, he's saying, Islam, he's praising the beauty of Isa He said he had, ear, he had hair that was reaching to between his ears and his shoulders. Like the most beautiful of hair that you've ever seen. So he praised the color of Isa alayhi salam, he praised his looks, he praised his hair. And then he said he had, he, he combed his hair and, and uh, water was dripping from his hair and he was leaning on two men, 
uh, who were doing tawaf around the Kaaba. So I asked, I said, Man hadha, who is this? So they said, this is Al-Masih ibn Maryam. This is uh, the Messiah, Jesus ibn Maryam, alayhi salam. So he said, then I saw a man with wiry hair and who was blind in his right, right eye as if it was a floating grape. And I said, who is this? And they said, this is Al-Masih al-Dajjal. This is the Antichrist. Ibn Abbas anhu, though, he has a narration where the Prophet وسلم, says, I saw Musa, Isa, and Ibrahim السلام, and Isa السلام, was of a red complexion, curly hair and a broad chest. Musa السلام, was of a dark complexion, straight hair, and a tall stature as if he was of the people of Azut. So that's also a hadith, right? Then you find Ibn Mas'ud anhu. Ibn Mas'ud's narration, uh, says that the Prophet وسلم, spoke about the Al-Masih al-Dajjal in front of the people and he said Allah is not one-eyed while a dajjal is blind in the right eye. Why? Because Dajjal will claim to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said Allah is not one-eyed, a dajjal is blind in the right eye and he said his, his eye looks like a rotten grape. Then he said وسلم, وسلم, while I was sleeping near the Kaaba last night, I saw in my dream فَإِذَا رَجُلٌ آدَمُ كَأَحْسَنِ مَا يُرَى مِنْ أَدَمُ The same thing that he said in the narration of Ibn Umar, that I saw a man uh, of dark skin who was the most beautiful of all of those with dark skin that I'd ever seen, and with the most beautiful of hair of all of those that I'd ever seen. And he basically, is, it, it perfectly coincides with the narration of uh, of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, then he continues to describe ad dajjal as well. So what do we do here? Because we have a narration of Ibn Mas'ud and Ibn Umar that are authentic, where the Prophet وسلم, is describing Isa alayhi salam as having dark skin, and then you have a narration of Ibn Abbas, where the Prophet وسلم, is describing Isa alayhi salam with red skin, which is, uh, you know, actually white skin. Okay, Ahmar would refer to very white skin. Uh, there is another narration from Umar al Khattab, anhu, also in Al Bukhari, where he says, لا والله ما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لعيسى أحمر. He said, I swear by Allah that the Prophet ﷺ did not say that Isa ﷺ had red skin. So Umar anhu is attaching an oath to it. He said, وَلَكِنْ قَالْ بَيْنَمَا أَنَا نَائِمٌ أَطُوفُ بِالْكَعْبَةِ فَإِذَا رَجْلٌ آدَمٌ And so on and so forth. He said, while I was sleeping, there was a man that approached and uh, he had dark skin and so on and so forth. Now, the point of this is, number one, we should not dispute like the Christians do about the color of Isa ﷺ because it doesn't matter. That's number one. It did not matter. You have conflicting narrations. The stronger of them, obviously, that Isa Islam had dark skin, which would be more historically accurate, but it doesn't matter. That's the point here. It was a non-factor, and it's part of the wisdom of not portraying the prophets of Allah. Okay, so uh, you know you have historical evidence. Uh, Ibn al-Manzur he says that Hajar, Musa, Isa, and Adam alayhi salam, because Adam means dark actually in the Arabic language, that's how the Arabs used to describe someone with dark skin. So Adam alayhi salam. And then you have the theological perspective, and as Ibn al-Mandur says, that the Sahaba did not care to ask much about this. And this is very significant, because if you look at the companions of the Prophet wasallam, they used to ask him about everything. But this was not a concern that they had. They would not ask the Prophet wasallam what color was Ibrahim. What color was this prophet? What color was he? Because it simply did not matter to them. So we should not portray them and it should not become an issue to where it becomes politicized. Some of the other prophets that are mentioned in the Quran or, or figures, uh, you have Dhul Qarnayn, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and Ibn Abbas, they both say that he was uh, a black king. Now obviously Dhul Qarnayn is a controversial historical figure in and of itself because is he Alexander? Is he Cyrus? Allahu alam. Again, it doesn't matter. The point being though, at this point now, because we know that there are prophets that Allah mentioned and there are prophets that Allah did not mention. The Prophet ﷺ says that there were 124,000 prophets. So, had authentic hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad, 124,000 prophets. Amongst them, 315 were messengers. Now, 124,000 prophets. Uh, so you can imagine how many of them were of different languages, how many of them were of different races, what they must have looked like, where they were sent to. That would mean that there were African prophets, there were Indian prophets, there were Chinese prophets, there were pro prophets that were sent probably to the Americas way before 
right, with the, with the ancient settlers of this land. There were prophets that were sent there. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذَّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We don't punish the people until we send them a messenger. A messenger from amongst themselves. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمٍ We have never sent a prophet except that he speaks the language of his people. And as the scholars say, the language of his people did not mean just that he spoke the language. As you all know, there are people that speak English, but they still don't speak your language. Right? We were talking about this earlier. As Sarah Palin would say, they don't speak American. All right? <laughs> so there are people that don't speak your language, but they still speak your language, right? It's a different accent, or, you know, they don't relate to you. The slang is different. So they might speak your language, but it's not really your language. So what did the ulama say that Allah means when He says, إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِ That means a person who walked with them, spoke with them, a person that was just like them, a person that they could relate to, right? The whole point of, um, you know, مَا لِهَذَا الرَّسُولِ يَمْشِي فِي يَأْكُلُ طَعَامُ وَيَمْشِي فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ What is it with this Prophet that walks in the marketplace, uses the restrooms, eats, and so on and so forth? Allah wants to send you Prophets that you could relate to. So when Allah would send Prophets in the past, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sending them to all, people all over the world. Allah was sending prophets in every language and in every color. We can't say, well, Allah didn't mention African prophets and so on and so forth. So we can't assume that there were African prophets. We actually can very much so assume that there were African and Indian and so on and so forth uh, prophets.